my favorite event, 10 years after is still my favorite event, okay? I had the craziest client called Fred Swanaker. So Fred Swanaker came to Ethiopia and wanted to do an event called the African Leadership Network. And the idea behind it is there's so many Africans, African descendants, all over the world working for amazing international organizations, but not necessarily coming into Africa to do bigger work for the betterment to transform to prosper Africa. So it was like his idea was how can we bring in the C the country director of McKinsey or an African who's working at Google or, you know, all these brilliant Africans who have been scattered around the world. How can we bring them all back to Africa and this in the in the launch concept in Ethiopia and have a discussion around how can we make our continent better? So conceptually right there, I was hooked. I was like, this is amazing. And he started talking about, and we, they, you know, how do we get them to experience Ethiopia and its authenticity? And the unique part about Ethiopia is this is where the African Union was created. So our grandparents, our forefathers came together to say, you know, to announce the independence of Africa and so forth. So for him, there was a correlation between they did that for us, the previous generation. What are we doing in this generation for our continent? So that's why he wanted to, to host it here. So we had different discussions and he said, great, we're doing it in Ethiopia and I'm working with you. I said, fantastic. Imagine by this point, I've only had two, three years of experience under my belt and I'm just winging it as I go. It's just me in the office plus maybe one person. Fred is insane. He would call in the middle of the night and be like, you are. I have this idea where I want models to dance to waving the flag. And at that time, it was the soccer game in South Africa, the first time an African country was hosting the World Cup. And there was this song by Cannon saying, waving flag, right? He's like, so I want you to find models, coordinate the dance, and I want that to be the opening scene. Sure, Fred, no problem. I'll hang up the phone going, oh my God, where am I gonna find these models? And who's gonna teach them how to dance? I'm not gonna teach them how to dance. And then he would call again, he's like, Yoaden, have you already looked at TED Talks? I'm like, eh, not that much. Okay, look at TED Talks. I want my room to look like that. I look at TED Talk. It's like an amphitheater type of setup. I'm like, Fred, we're at the Sheraton. There's no way I can create that stage. I don't know. I just, that's the stage I want. Make it happen. I go to the Sheraton. I'm like, can you guys create this stage? They say no. I'm almost in tears. But this is what my client wants. We have to be able to create it. It was just every little idea he had. And then he'd be like, you are done. I want the opening ceremony to be inside the African Union so that we can sit where our forefathers sat and I want people to really feel it in their bone or what it meant to be an African leader. And I want you to invite your president at the time as a leader for him to have a discussion with the crowd. Sure, Fred, hang up the phone. Oh my God, how am I gonna get these people in this room? So it was, he pushed my limits. He made me talk to people I would have never spoken to. He. Through that event, I learned how to negotiate while I cry in the bathroom, come back, compose myself and say, no, 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 but we can get this done. That event transformed me as a business, like as somebody who does events. I learned never to take no for a no, not to give up, to push, to be resourceful. If this person says no to me, okay, fine. I'm going to go that way and talk to that person. If I can't find a way to this person, I'm going to call everybody I know in the city until they tell me who I can call to get to that person because I had to deliver. Remember, I don't give up. I, like, I'm given a task and I have to deliver on it. So here comes the D-Day. By this point, I've been able to get uh, the AU. I have the approval for to host the event there. I couldn't get the prime minister, but I got the minister of foreign affairs. I was able to get the crowd in the palace to have dinner. I found the, the models. I found these guys who could t train them how to do the dance. Funny part. Two days before the event, I'm talking with the production team. Now everybody's here from the organization. And I'm like, yeah, and we're listening to the music. I'm like, yeah, they're dancing to this song. And they go, no, no, we told you we want them to dance to Waving the Flag. I had a whole other song that they were dancing to. I was like, two days before the event, I'm like, uh-huh, yep, no problem, got it. Run to the choreographers and say, wrong music. They have to redo it to this song. So that's like overnight work. The amphitheater sitting that he wanted, got it done. I relentless, okay? So these people are now coming in. They've flown in from different parts of the world. You walk in the space and the energy of all these different Africans going, 
I've always wanted to meet you. When you, when you wrote this article, I was so inspired. They're just talking about, and you're sitting there going, oh my God, this is the power of Africa. And you never knew it. And you, you're, the room, the energy those people carried, the discussions that were happening, how they were challenging and arguing with each other. And then they went to the African Union and, and the look on their faces to say, this is where my you know, two presidents ago sat. This is where they decided how to run Africa. Just that entire experience to this day, I have not been, I have not seen it in any other event. It's just, it was electrifying. And everything, and I do mean everything, went flawlessly. Like that propelled us to every other event.